Hey, this is Brandon and Tim with Cairo Up. I want to give you guys some useful information since Dr. Burleson bores you with his information on a weekly basis. Uh, just kidding. I'm actually going to steal two of his blogs, one from a couple weeks ago, one from a year ago, and put together a useful blog that you can use tomorrow. Uh, that blog is based upon radiculitis, and clearly we see that on a regular basis as chiropractors. However, his blog, which I found very interesting, was on how to determine who has chemical radiculitis. And what he found from that paper, and I think it was Ford was the author in 2020, said that there are certain signs or certain symptoms you're gonna have with lumbar spine radiculitis. Like if somebody has constant pain, if pain is less than a five out of 10, if they have nocturnal pain, if those symptoms uh, began about 24 hours after uh, the injury or the event uh, that, that predisposed that person to pain, um, or if they have symptoms that are not getting better with walking, those are symptoms of somebody who has chemical radiculitis. However, we can also look for uh, the things that are objective that we can find in our office. Uh, so what we found from my paper, from my favorite author, Francisco Javier Gonzalez Espanosa de la Monteros, uh, just because I like saying his name, uh, is he looked at objectively what can we do once we get those symptoms from our patients uh, that we put in our subjective section of our note. And what he found is there's multiple tests, orthopedic and neuro neurodynamic, that can help us say that yes, you have radiculitis versus something else. Uh, so what we can find is that the orthopedic testing and neurodynamic testing when done in isolation aren't that great. However, if you can look at the accuracy of those tests when performed in combination, they actually do very well as compared to the gold standard as far as MRI. So the two combinations of tests are the first with being an SLR and a Braggart test. So if my uh, pain in the butt right here is due to uh, radiculitis, uh, I can start off with doing the SLR, which is bringing the leg up, uh, isolating only hip flexion, putting a lot of tension across that sciatic nerve and looking for reproduction of symptoms. As soon as you hit that point, make a note of it, put it in your note. However, otherwise you're gonna drop it about 10 degrees for the Bragger test if symptoms go away, and then you can dor or, yeah, dorsiflex the ankle and it reproduces symptoms again, that is a positive test. There is a very good sign they have lumbar spine radiculitis. The other way we could do that, could you go ahead and set up for me? is we can do slump and Desjardins triad. Now Desjardins triad is uh, not necessarily an orthopedic test. It's do they reproduce the symptoms upon any kind of coughing, sneezing or uh, straining at the stool. Uh, did you have any pain going on your leg up on straining at the <laughs> stool this morning? Um, and the other one is slump test. Now I do prefer a modified slump test where I use a, a stool just kind of uh, wheel myself around the treatment room. I'm actually gonna bring both of his legs up here. And the reason I go on a stool is because it's very comfortable for me. For me, he's gonna slowly slump down and I'm gonna bring his head uh, towards his waist and I'm looking for reproduction of symptoms, putting a lot of stress across those dural structures, and once again, looking for any kind of reproduction of their symptoms. So in combination, if we can do the subjective section, which we saw from Dr. Burlesman's note, and we can look at the objective section, which is what we just went over with this paper uh, by Francisco Javier Gonzalez Espanosa de la Monteros, we can be pretty sure someone has lumbar spine radiculitis, as compared to something else that could be presenting and causing a dull, achy sensation leg, like a hamstring strain or something else. What is a good way that I could say that this is not a lumbar spine radiculitis and say maybe it's something else like a hamstring strain? What test do you use, Dr. Berlman? Uh, classic hamstring test. And a lot of times if I get fooled with the patient who has a hamstring and a lumbar radiculopathy, I'll have them do a take off the shoe test. So they trap one foot on the floor and then pull their foot out of their shoe if, it's, if you're trapping that heel, that's gonna recruit the hamstring. Another one that I really like is the hamstring drag test, where the patient takes their foot and drags it across the floor. I tell them to try to rub some of the sole of your shoe onto my carpet. I really want them to drag that along. And then we can do some resisted testing in a couple of different planes. We can take their leg up into a straight leg raise and have them push down into it, and then have them at a 90-90 and pull their leg out. So sometimes just getting it at a different angle. One thing to remember about those hamstring injuries is that the closer to the origin at the ischial tuberosity, the longer that patient is gonna to take to heal. So we gotta give them some time. Those are things that are frustrating and are not gonna be quick recoveries for our patients. But hopefully these tests help you out and you'll learn something from somebody who's learning something. So the biggest piece of this puzzle is we all like ducks, 
We all like rows, but sometimes there's squirrels and they're everywhere. Uh, you know, something as simple as a, a low back pain, a butt pain, isn't always uh, as simple as sciatica. Sometimes there's multiple things we can consider. Uh, check out Cairo up uh, as far as a condition reference on hamstring strain and how we differentiate that from uh, a typical low back problem as a disc problem or spondylolosis uh, and a radicular symptom. Uh, thanks for watching. Look forward to talking to you next week.